Okay, the only thing I want to get out of the way first before I actually start is I'm not going to be rating these albums in a vacuum. I think every Toho Bossa Nova album is actually really good. Some albums aren't going to be as good as the best albums. If I put an album in C or D, that doesn't mean I don't think it's good. It just means it's not as good as the albums in B, A, or S. So with that being said, let's start with Toho Boss number one. As I continue with the list, I think I'm going to fix placements, but I think this should work as a good general spot for it. I've actually uh, went ahead and re-listened to all of the Toho Bossa Novas before I did this. And at first, I thought I was going to have Toho Bossa Nova 1 at the bottom. I listened to it recently and I was like, this is a lot better than I remember. I remember not really liking it or not thinking about it too much. I know there's um, some vocal tracks on it that I like, especially um, Broad I Promise and Komuchi's theme rearrangement, right? That one, Th those tracks are really fucking good. The only thing is, I believe there's a track by Milka on this one, and I love Milka, but you could tell she was trying to find her, I guess her footing here in Toho Boss number one. And overall, I think it is really good. And I gotta get some, some of those tracks in my playlist, but Toho Boss number one is very solid. Toho Boss number two. If I don't put this in S tier, someone is going to want me dead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in A tier. The reason why is because I know what's going in S tier. That being said, Toho Bossa Nova 2 is still fucking amazing. Some standout tracks for me, Close to Your Mind, Darling Would You Catch Me, Camellia Tea House in the Underworld. I don't remember if Relative Relations is on. I think I think this is the one with Relative Relations on it. And of course, Tiny Little Addy Antum, amazing track. This was actually the album that got me into the series. And not just the Toho Bossa Nova album series. I mean Toho in general, because I first heard Camellia T House in the Underworld from a fucking Efont video, which he's a he was he was a Dark Souls 2 YouTuber. And I was like, holy shit. I'd never heard anything like this before. It was so fucking cute and 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 fun and just the vibe was on point. When I heard that song, I was like, what the fuck is this? I thought the music I was hearing was in the actual games at the time. And I was like, yo, this game has some fucking the music is fucking crazy. But come to find out. Toho is a huge fucking thing, you know, it's outside of the games. So this is where I got my start in Toho. Melia Tea House in the Underworld is still one of my favorite tracks of all time. Just because anytime it comes on, I'm just I'm just vibing to the song. It doesn't matter what mood I'm in. It could be a late night drive. It could be I'm on my computer at like 3 a.m. in the fucking morning. I'm listening to Camellia Tea House in the fucking Underworld. That track goes so fucking hard. And I believe they had Liku at on the... I don't know if I'm saying that right. Someone's gonna fucking cringe if I'm saying that wrong. Look at the way that shit is spelled. How am I supposed to fucking pronounce that shit? But Liku at, she does vocals on this. And I, from what I can tell, it's kind of like a... That's kind of like a Miku situation where like someone just provides vocals and it's not her actually there singing someone can correct me on that but i think it's that kind of situation that being said i wish they brought her back because camellia tea house in the underworld is genuinely one of my favorite songs ever and especially across the entire series of toho bossa nova it is so fucking good i love that song but toho bossa nova 2 a tier toho bossa nova 3 is a very strong album i think it goes in a tier behind Toho Boss Nova 2. Now, some standout tracks on Toho Boss Nova 3. Oh, my bad. I might be saying this wrong, but hold on. K L V M, I believe is how you say it. Someone can correct me if I'm being cringe. One of my favorite, <laughs> again, another one of my favorite tracks of all time. The vocals are just so chill and cute and relaxed. It's just like, if I'm ever having a bad time and, I'm just, I just, and that song just comes up, it just deletes stress. There's Ring a Ring. A lot of the instrumental tracks are actually really catchy, which typically in Toho Bossa Nova albums, the instrumental tracks are more focused on being uh, kind of like laid back. You put it on in the background, you know, you can sleep to them, that kind of stuff. That being said, Toho Bossa Nova 3 is fucking solid. There's also, this is the album with Eureka on it. Eureka is an amazing fucking track. I don't know, there's something about the strings towards the end of that song, which is really fucking, it, it sounds really melancholic, which is weird for like a Bossa Nova album, right? But it's a really fun track. And overall, I just think it's a very solid album. Also, I forgot to say this at the, at the beginning of the video. Yes, the album cover is playing a part in this because listen, I, the album covers are fucking cute. So they're gonna play a part in the rankings. Now, Toho Bossa Nova 4, first fucking S tier. This album is from start to finish. It is a fucking 10. There's a lot of versatility in the tracks. You have Don't Let Me Down. From Don't Let Me Down, the vibe and melodies are lighthearted. Although I'm assuming the lyrics are a lot more, uh, not as wholesome, right? But don't, there's Don't Let Me Down to Milka's track, which is one of my favorite songs that she's ever done for a Bossa Nova album. 
that song is so fucking catchy and i feel like that was really where she found her footing and you can see her kind of lean into that style in later bossa nova albums especially the one right after this so that being said Toho Boss number 4 is fucking great. The album cover is adorable. I love the colors. It's Rumia. How could you not like it? Solid, fucking solid S tier. I can't say it enough. Okay, I forgot to talk about, okay. Uh, Certifique, Certifique Flan, I believe is how it's said, is another amazing track uh, and another one that I discovered through Ifon in his fucking, uh, I believe it was like his Dark Souls, one of his Dark Souls 3 videos. It's such a good fucking track. Oh my fucking God. It is so fucking chill. And then the track right after that, Stay By My Side, is another one that, dog, if you're ever going for a late night drive, I think Toho Boss Nova 4 might just be the best album for that. You know, with tracks like Stay By My Side and shit like that, it's just so fucking good. Okay, uh, Toho Boss Nova 5. This one might be my, might be my favorite. This I actually um, own the physical CD for this album because it's one of my favorites. Also, the, you know, the album cover, it's Yomu. It's adorable. Yomu is one of the cutest girls in Toho, if not the cutest girl. It's Yomu. She's looking adorable. It's Toho Boss Number 5. And the funny thing about Toho Boss Number 5 is it only has one vocal track by Milka. But I gotta say, that one vocal track is all it fucking needs because Milka fucking pops off on that fucking shit. I believe the English name for that track is called, is uh, Pearl Grey at, at Dusk. Either, that, either Pearl Grey or Twilight Grey at Dusk, something like that. She really flexes her style and her vocals on that fucking track. It's her signature calming soothing and like mid to low pitched voice which is really fucking nice the melodies are catchy keep in mind milka makes her own instrumentals so when she has a track on an album if i remember right typically she is the one making her own instrumentals and writing her own lyrics and doing the vocal performance and i don't know if anyone could tell but i am a big milka fan i love her stuff i genuinely think pearl grad dusk is one of my favorite songs ever probably my top five it's like anytime it comes on my playlist i just let it play out that last maybe i think like maybe one minute 30 seconds of the song is so fucking catchy it just is that being said the instrumental tracks they don't fuck around either it's really fun really catchy relaxing and honestly just really fucking great it is in my opinion it's a perfect album yeah i can't say anything wrong with it it's just oh boston of six is one that i don't remember liking that much but upon re-listening to it I enjoyed it a lot more than I did the first time. That being said, I, I'm still gonna put it below Toho Boss Nova 1. Now the album cover, <laughs> if you, I'm pretty sure if you go on any comment section with the whole album on YouTube, you'll find someone trying to find a way to just be like, what the fuck is wrong with this album cover? Like Chen's a little kid. Here's the thing, he's wearing bloomers. <laughs> this is like, bottom line, she's wearing fucking bloomers. It says, if you think it's sexual, then maybe you have a bloomer fetish. That being said, I think Toho Boss Nova 6 does have some standout tracks. Like, uh, well, I say that and I completely forget. I think um, Milka, Milka's contribution here is great. I feel like that was going to be obvious that I was going to say that. But outside of that, I feel like the instrumental tracks are a little kind of forgettable. And it's being forgettable is a little less offensive when it comes to music you're supposed to play in the background. The instrumentals on Toho Boss Nova 5, like Give, give Up On It and uh, Mari Sanha, are much better than the ones on Toho Boss Nova 6 as a whole. So, bottom of B tier. Toho Boss Nova 7, I want to put it at the bottom of A tier. I think it it would float somewhere in between A and B. Okay, here's the thing. Should it be higher because I've listened to it so much? Or should it be lower because I'm tired of listening to it? You know, I'm in that kind of predicament with it because just I've listened to it so much. Okay, I thought about it. I think Toho Boss Nova 7 would actually go above Toho Boss Nova 2. The only thing is, I feel like Toho Boss Nova 2 is a bit more consistent. While Toho Boss Nova 7, overall, it is more uh, more enjoyable for me. With, I do think, Black Lily Princess, the last track, the last vocal track, I believe, is... It's not that it's forgettable, it's that it doesn't have that, that catchiness to it, you know? I think uh, an interesting thing about music is, to make it unpredictable... But at the same time, be able to have the listener guess to how the melody is going to play out. And I feel like for Black Lady Princess, it doesn't have that same fucking uh, jive to it, if that makes any sense. And I should I should have said at the start of the video, I'm not a fucking music. I'm not into music theory. I'm going to be making up a lot of fucking shit. That being said, Toho Boss Nova 7 is solid. The instrumental tracks are fucking great, especially the first one on the fucking album and flowing and the third track on it i think i believe it's called soliloquy flowing and soliloquy are great fucking vocal tracks very catchy i believe the second track is uh nachi who i haven't talked about 
I think it's Nachi. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Nachi, from the very start, this wasn't the first album she's on. I just decided to mention her now. Nachi always fucking kills it on vocals. She is great. I can't stress it enough. I, lo I love her voice. It's Her voice is so fucking cute. But yeah, she she's great. Milka on the third track is fucking amazing. She, I think, not as good as Toho Boston Nova 6 and 5, but still continuing on with her style. She's doing a really good job. Toho Boston Nova 7, top of 8 tier. Toho Boston Nova 8, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Toho Boston Nova 8 is also one of the uh, Boston Nova albums that I own. I don't know if it's above the Yomu one. I say Yomu one, Toho Boston Nova 5. I don't know if it's above Toho Boss Nova 5. And speaking of album covers, I think the album cover with Junko on it is fucking adorable. It's very fucking cute. That smile. That being said, I don't find it to be as consistently enjoyable as Toho Boss Nova 5. But some tracks are just that fucking good. For example, it has one of the best instrumental tracks. I think not even just one of the best, just the best instrumental track across every fucking Toho Boss Nova album. Which I don't know the translation of, but I'm probably just gonna put it in the video as I edit it, right? Whatever's playing right now is the, is the instrumental track that I'm talking about. But there are certain instrumental tracks like Insane Stoicism and sorry, Ghost Light in the Sky, which aren't awful. But, you know, when you surround those tracks with tracks like uh, Soda Pop Ice Cream, the one I'm playing right now, and uh, Fuwa Fuwa Doremi, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough on those tracks, you know what I'm saying? So... Toho Boss Nova 8, I do, I do think it's a little below Toho Boss Nova 5, just a little bit. Still one of my favorite albums of all time. It's like Toho Boss Nova 5. And I did bring up Fuwa Fuwa Doremi. That is one of the best vocal tracks, again, ever. It's cute, it's relaxing, and there have been times where I could just put that shit on and I'm just... I just feel no worries. It's like, oh yeah, I got work tomorrow? Okay, I'm gonna put on Fuwa Fuwa Doremi, I don't give a fuck. So, that's my relationship with Toho Boss Nova 8. Very strong album. And I think from here is where the ranking not only gets tougher, but the albums kind of, you know, eh, you know what I'm saying? So Toho Boss Nova 9, everyone loves Chirno, and I love Chirno too, but that doesn't mean I'm going to put her that fucking high. I think Toho Boss Nova 9 is my least favorite. I think I'm putting it in C tier, honestly. As far as I'm concerned, for Toho Boss Nova 9, I very rarely listen to it. I think the strongest vocal track is Milka's track. Which, even then, that one doesn't stand out that. It is interesting to listen to for the first time because you can tell she's kind of experimenting with stuff. But just because she's experimenting with it doesn't mean, you know, fuck with it. It is a, it is an interesting first time listen. But in my opinion, Toho Boss Nova 9 has very little replay value. And the last track with 3L, who I love. I love 3L. I think she's always been great on it. Mostly every song in the series. I feel like on Sunset, <sighs> Sunset Chance... Sunset Chance? I feel like uh, 3L on such Sunset Chant, that's just so hard to say, at the end of the album, it's not that her performance is bad, it's just, I feel like the melody was not the catchiest, and it's kind of like, it kind of reminds me of that thing Eminem does when he does that, that start and stop kind of flow, and it's really fucking hard to listen to. And I feel bad for saying this because I love 3L. I feel like 3L is one of my favorite vocalists in the series, but on this one specifically, it just didn't land, basically. Now, there are some instrumental tracks that I actually really like on this one, like Nuko No Beach. And the first track, which has a really fun retro vibe to it, or retro sound to it. And there's also one vocal track by, uh, I forgot his name. Okay, I forgot his name, but um, the first vocal track of this album, I think his name is Mano. Someone correct me on that. I can't read Japanese or Kanji or whatever the fuck. I'm just going out from memory here. He's great. I think his vocal track carries the album pretty fucking hard. But that being said, there's really only three albums I could point my finger at for Toho Boss Nova 9. The other ones kind of, you know, I do think Toho Boss Nova 9 is going to be my least favorite one because I, I re-listened to Toho Boss Nova 10 recently and actually enjoyed it quite a bit. When it first came out, I thought it was actually kind of whatever, but when I listened to it, I enjoyed it a lot more. I'm actually going to put it at the top of B tier. So Toho Boss Nova 10. Re-listening to it now, there is one track on there with 3L. I believe it's the first vocal track on the album where I couldn't really get behind it. But when I listened to it again, I still felt kind of iffy about it but when i got to the hook the hook part of that song is extremely fucking catchy it is so fucking good i just feel like everything surrounding the hook is kind of not as catchy that being said toho boss nova 9 really fucking good now that i'm saying this i kind of want to put it above toho boss nova 3 i'm not gonna lie 
Also, the album cover at Patchouli on it. You know, Patchouli, is, she's not one of my favorite Katoa characters, but she is one of the cutest characters in the game. In the series, I should say. And yeah, just really solid. Solid instrumental tracks. Vocal tracks are great from everyone. Okay, Toho Bossa Nova 11. When I first listened to it, I thoroughly fucking enjoyed it. And I still do enjoy it. So I'm going to put it in A tier. Right above Toho Bossa Nova 3. Obviously, album cover. Very cute. Uh, Sega. I don't think she's that cute, but I do think she has, the potential is there. You know what I'm saying? So, it looks very cute here. That being said, first, this album kicks off with one of the best vocal tracks in the series. Straight up. And I don't think... 3L's even saying anything. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think she's even saying anything. She's just like ad-libbing or some shit, right? I don't fucking know. Does it matter? Fuck no. It's fucking catchy as shit. It's cute. It's fun to listen to. And there was a time where when Toho Bustin' of Eleven first came out, I was bumping that track 24-7. Nothing was stopping me. And overall, instrumental tracks are great. Although, instrumental tracks on Toho Bustin' of Eleven are not as strong as Toho Bustin' of a 10, which is why I place it a little lower. And even though the first vocal track on Toho Bustin' of Eleven which I'm not even going to try to pronounce, is better than anything on Toho Bossa Nova 10. The other vocal tracks on Toho Bossa Nova 11 aren't as good as Toho Bossa Nova 10. So that's my logic behind the rank. Also, a stand standout instrumental track on Toho Bossa Nova 11 is definitely a Starfall Mountain. Very good. It's a rearrangement of one of the newer characters, although at this point, it might, she might not be considered new. Okay, so Toho Bossa Nova 12 is going to be a really interesting one. Getting giddy just thinking about it. I definitely think it's better than 12. It's hard to say, because I think overall, I do like Toho Bossa Nova 10. I think Toho Bossa Nova 10 is a lot more consistent. Is this, this is my third time saying the same fucking shit, but I'm going to repeating myself. But it's just true. Toho Bossa Nova 10 feels a lot more consistent, while Toho Bossa Nova 12 has really fucking high peaks. Overall, I do think the instrumental tracks could use some work and Toho Bossa Nova 11 where, is where Milka started to like kind of like lose me. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I think 12, I believe she's still trying to maybe find a new style, I believe. I wanna, obviously I don't wanna be super fucking mean about it because artistry in general, it's all about experimenting, but I don't wanna be a bitch about it. That being said, Toho Bossa Nova 12 does have some standout tracks like the last one, the last vocal track, the second to last vocal track, and Alice in the Rain, one of the instrumental tracks really fucking good and really catchy but i really want to talk about that last track i believe this is where those two vocalists i don't know their names but those two are great their chemistry is fucking strong and this is a very good start to their contributions like i can hear it right now they're so fucking good especially the, i gotta say it i gotta give it to the fucking female vocalist her voice is fucking addictive i don't know what it is but she has the perfect mid-tone voice. It is not too deep, not too high, not that I have anything against high-pitched voices or, or lower-pitched voices, but I'm just saying she has the perfect mid-tone voice. It's so fucking good. Or it might be on the lower spectrum, considering the fact that she's a female. I don't fucking know. I'm just saying I really like her voice. And not only that, the entire vibe and sound of that last track might be the most unique in the series. Maybe not the best for me, maybe not my favorite, but definitely the most unique in the series. If anyone here has ever played an online game, at one point in time, you were carrying the fuck out of a match. And can we just say, the three songs that I highlighted off the Toa Boss on the 12 carry it really fucking hard. Not that the other tracks are bad or anything, it's just those three tracks are, they really are just that good. So I think I'm gonna put it over 10, honestly. And also Seki Bunky on the cover looks fucking amazing. Uh, Ichi Haya, he's been doing solid work with album covers in general, but I think with Toho Boss on the 12, he really popped off. Just look at the lighting and fucking shading and shit. It looks really nice. Seki Bunky looks adorable. I love it. And yes, some fucking smart ass is gonna put like, oh, you know, Ichi Haya does Lolly Hentai. Yeah, who, uh, yeah, yeah. But is there Lolly Hentai on the Toho Boss of albums? No. <laughs> That being said, Toho Boss No. 12, very strong album. Definitely one of the better ones. Okay, so Toho Boss No. 3 is going to be the most interesting one for me. Because, not because I love it or anything, but uh, because a lot like Toho Boss No. 4, the sounds are so fucking out there. So, right off the bat, it starts off pretty standard, right? But Green Sleeves with Milka on it is definitely my least favorite track that Milka's ever done. And not one that I consider catchy at all. And there is the second vocal track, which I believe is Nachi. I'm not going to check because I'm lazy, but I do believe it's Nachi. I love it. It's very fucking good. But the track after it, Position of the Dusk, I believe the song is called. That is a song that could pass as a fucking distant cry worst beat ever created sample, which sounds so fucking mean to say. But go listen to that shit and tell me I'm fucking wrong. But then again, I listen to shit like that. I literally have some of his worst beats ever created downloaded onto my playlist. So does that actually mean I like that song? I don't fucking know. I'm so fucking conflicted on that song. It's funny. It's a 
funny song, but I don't know how to feel about it. That being said, that is just the beginning of the track, and as, as the first part of that song plays out, we get into the actual meat of the song, so to speak. And it's really not as much of a meme as it sounds like. Oh, fuck me, I was wrong. Um, I literally just checked, and Nachi hasn't been on Toho Bossanova, I believe, in a while. So the first... The second vocal track is actually 3L. My bad. Credit to 3L. To be fair, when 3L does the like the high pitched, like nasally cute voice, she sounds a lot like Nachi. So another track, Fake Adventure, is an also interesting one. They go for that that retro sound, a uh, retro sound, retro sound, like in uh, I forgot which which album, oh, yeah, whichever album they did. I don't know. They feel standard, you know, not bad. But I do I do think the the melodies with the, with that ret retro uh, synthesizer or whatever is really fun. It's cute. I like it. Good track. But with track eight, the dastardly duo, they make a fucking comeback. And just like with Toho Boss Nova 12, they fucking kill it. I just realized I haven't ranked it. I've just been talking about the tracks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it above Toho Boss Nova 12. Track eight, again, continuing on with their perfect chemistry, the unique sound, the catchy melodies. <laughs> so fucking good. So catchy. As of recent, the best vocal track so far overall still one of the best i can't say it enough that song is so fucking good and also uh keiki i believe her name is i don't keep up with the, with the newer tohos i'm gonna be honest i can't remember them I, I can remember their designs but i can't remember their names i haven't been into the series for a while but keiki i believe her name is looks super fucking cute on the album just the face she's making is adorable and i've always liked her design and I, I'm, I'm guessing she is the fan favorite of, of whatever game she appears in but yeah, that's the list. Chibion, I'll never forget the time I discovered him through a fucking Dark Souls 2 video. Fucking Dark Souls 2 is balanced. Like, are you serious? That's how I discovered one of my favorite. I don't want to say one of my favorite artists because Chibion Records is a circle. But I'm assuming Chibion is like the mastermind behind everything. So yeah, one of my favorite series of albums ever, which contains some of my flat out my favorite albums ever. So about some of five, eight, and four. And honestly, as just cute as the music is, it really is just stress relieving. I, I think I've said it before to myself. These songs just like delete stress. It's so fucking good. That's the list. I think it looks fucking solid. I don't know if there's anything that needs to be changed. I'd say Toho, between Toho Boss number two and Toho Boss number seven, I, I feel like those are kind of like on equal footing. Honestly, it just depends on the day. But yeah, I can't wait for Toho Boss number 14. 